<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and that's because, the, as you mentioned, the difficulty. Uh, I, I wasn't a real fan of it either, uh, you know, because of the same reason. Uh, I mean, we don't like, at least I don't, I don't like uh, politicians who become institutions, yet there's something of value that, you know, in terms of institutional knowledge. Uh, exactly. I, mean, I mean, John Alario, for an example. There I mean, there you go. His his institutional knowledge isn't just on the issues. He mastered the issues long, long ago. His knowledge is on how to get a group of people to work together to do something smart for our state. And um, when you're constantly, when you never get to a place where you can stop worrying about being reelected. You can never, I mean, I can't tell you how many people, and I never see this as a reflection about who they are as a person, but there are many legislators who tell me, you know, I, I know it would be the right thing to do to vote yes or to vote no, but my, I know the people at home won't understand it and they won't like it. And so, um, and I, I don't see anything unethical about that statement. What they're saying is I, I think the people at home want me to vote a certain way and I'm here to represent them. I wish that they could understand this issue the way that I do now that I've been mm -hmm. here, because I think they would think differently about it. Um, and I really see what, what I do as an advocate now, I guess, you know, I'm a registered lobbyist, but m most of my work at the Capitol is on behalf of organizations that are board led um, with very clear missions about improving um, different quality of life aspects. And I'm very lucky to have um, clients like that and, um, you know, their advocacy has become sort of lobbying plus because we have to go back to the legislator's district and educate so that the people there want the, the legislator to do what we're asking them to do um, before we've ever made the ask. And so, um, you know, we do a lot of using data and, and technology. We're able to show the legislator, no, it, this actually your gut is right. This thing that you think is the right thing to do, they do want you to follow through with that. Um, and here's and here's how, and then this is where the PR, the lobbying plus stuff goes even further. And then here's what you can say when you take this vote. Here's the reason you can give and here's the press release you can put out. Um, it's no longer a game of stakes and golf. Don't worry, I have to do all that too. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> But I have to also make sure that in this climate, people know that if they choose to do what I'm asking them to do, um, they'll be able to come back and keep fighting for the people that they are, are there to represent and that it won't get them pegged, you know, in, in, a, um, in an inappropriate way. I cannot name for you one legislator who is not here for the right reasons. Each and, each and every one of them that I have ever met really comes to Baton Rouge you know, I think most of them would say with a servant's heart, wanting to do the right thing for the people that they represent, that is not always <laughs> as easy, you know, as it seems. Um, and sometimes that means voting for someone else's bill that you don't think is the greatest so that your thing that's really important for your hometown can, can get done. Um, and I think a lot of people feel like that's, that's shady. And I guess I would just say that's, that's a uh, reality. Um, and I want someone smart and practical representing me. I can't speak for every voter, but I want someone who will be practical with, um, with their resources. And I want them to view their vote as a resource. You know, they have one vote to give if, if they're in the house of representatives, they're one of 105 people. Um, 53 of them have to speak clearly on most issues. And so if you're one 53rd, of someone else's solution, they can be one fifty third of yours, and it, you know, you got to add them up fifty three at a time. So, mm -hmm. um, it, but it ends up mattering, and how you treat people ends up mattering, um, both at home and in the building. Sure, I, I, I mean, definitely. Um, the role of polls um, is it your experience that there are a lot of polls that actually take place during the session. Uh, and the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, one of the people that we have on a lot is Bernie Pinsonette. 
Yeah. Uh, he actually, That's you know, a writes a lot for Bitey Buzz. And, and uh, so he did a poll. He did, does his spring poll and, and December poll. And, and essentially, you know, he's saying that, hey, you know, there is no desire from the, uh, the voters to raise a penny tax. And that might be an overstatement. But, you know, that is how, you know, that's what he is reporting, you know, that they just, you know, people do well, not want to raise tax. This is one of those instances where polling really matters and it's really important because if you tell people that we're going to raise a penny, then of course they're going to say they're not for it. Right. If you tell them that we're going to maintain a portion of a penny and institute a $400 million tax cut, which is what was proposed in the special session. And I don't think explained very well by the proponents of that position. Um, they're for it <laughs> because everybody sure. wants. Um, and so you have to decide which one's spin. I, I actually believe that saying raising a penny, I think, I think characterizing any continuation of a tax that's gonna roll off as a raise, as a new tax, as new revenue, um, I think that's spin. If you're already paying it, it's a con it's not a raise. It's the same tax you were paying. And in fact, because the proposal on the table was to eliminate a portion of that fifth penny of sales tax that we um, put mm -hmm. on the books, it would have actually reduced net a net tax reduction for Louisiana families of four hundred million dollars, while still having enough money in the budget to fully fund hospitals, higher education, and tops. Um, and I think that you will see in 2019 messages against legislators who voted no on that, that they voted no on a $400 million tax cut for the people of Louisiana. Um, so, I mean, in, in terms of 400 million, that's, that's so abstract. I mean, it really is. Uh, but, but if you poll it, it's not abstract. I mean, 400 million sounds like a lot to a lot of people. Oh, sure. No, I mean, no, no question about that. But if you're looking at a total $30 billion budget, well, right now our whole yeah. deficit that almost covers mm -hmm. our entire deficit. 